Hello and welcome to Labour Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. On this week edition of the program, we'll be focusing on issues in the electricity sector in Nigeria and how it affects everyone. We also have new stories for you. We will be right back. The Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, has lost its second president, Ali Chiroma, who served the working people for seven decades. Ali Chiroma served as the president of the NLC during the military rule and was exemplified in the epoch of the resistance by the Congress and its allies in the naval movement against the Structural Adjustment Program, SAP, of the General Ibrahim Babangida administration. A large crowd of colleagues and supporters attended the third day prayer for the former NLC president at his residence in Maiduguri, the Borno state capital. The crowd at the prayer included top government officials, politicians, journalists, family members, and friends. Also in attendance were members of the NLC led by its president, Joe Ajiro. Some of the guests described the late Ali Churuma as a dedicated unionist, true champion, and fearless leader who dedicated his life to the protection of welfare of Nigerian workers. Ali Churuma served as the president of the NLC between 1984 and 1988. Uh, Later, uh, Ali Churuma is an epitome of uh, the struggle and uh, epitome of courage. He was the president of NLC at the most difficult moment in the history of NLC. That is at the twin light of military dictatorship. He was the president, as at the time, most mortals would not want to lead or step out to lead the NLC. He was the president at a time that required both courage and intellectual, you know, vigor for you to survive as NLC president. Ali Chiroma to me, uh, you know that he was uh, my mentor and uh, he was also my principal. Uh, you know, I am a product of the School of Health Technology and uh, he's an embodiment of courage and sacrifice. He's somebody that is well celebrated, even beyond the shores of Nigeria. Uh, at the International Labour Organization, where he served on the governing body, for six years, his records are still there, and uh, I was happy to step into his shoes uh, based on those records. So we are going to miss him, and certainly uh, is a good example for oncoming generation of leaders uh, to inculcate some of his attributes of courage because leadership without courage means nothing. Earlier in the week, President Bola Tinubu sent a condolence message to the family of Ali Chiroma over the passing of the elder state man. The president sympathizes with organized labor and everyone affected by the painful loss. President Tinubu affirmed that Let Chiroma stood up for the independence of the NLC and defended the downtrodden when it mattered the most. Ali Chiroma died at the age of 91. The Private Telecommunications and Communication Senior Staff Association of Nigeria has suspended its planned strike which was to begin on April the 4th, 2024. Its General Secretary, Okonu Abdullahi, said the suspension of the strike was as a result of agreements reached with the subcontractors it had issues with. The union had early announced plans to embark on an indefinite strike over alleged unresolved issues with subcontractors linked with Huawei Technologies Nigeria Limited. The subcontractors included Remy Group, Allstream Energy Solutions Limited, Upper Crest Limited, Tilium Nigeria Limited, and Specific Tools and Techniques Limited. During an exclusive interview with the General Secretary of the Union, he ruled out agreements reached between the workers and their employers. 80% will be remitted into their pension account monthly. Then also, 
health facilities will be provided for not only them, their spouses, and their four, at least four dependents. Then as well, life group assurance must also be put in place. And other ones that we have issues, I mean, we have issues with, likewise, the, uh, I remember leave and leave allowance now. Yeah, at least minimum, according to ILO convention, minimum uh, leave days for our members is 21 working days. But these people, uh, these uh, employers, the subcontractors are not doing that. What they do is less than 14 days. Even in, in some instances, they don't even allow them to go on, uh, on leave. When they go, they call them, please, it's an emergency, please quickly come back. And our uh, members, they will dash back do the job, and uh, they are not even compensated on that. So leave and leave allowances and other issues pertaining to their welfare will be taken care of by the collective bargaining agreement, which is one of those things that has been agreed upon that will be commenced latest in a month's time. The tariff is going to affect business operations, it's going to affect the home front, the budget. And then we need, we need more information, we need more explanation. Why, why is the tariff increased? Are we going to get value at the end of the day? Are we assured that with this increased tariff, there will be better um, delivery from the, from the electricity suppliers? Will there be better? But definitely, prices will go up because, and even at home, we'll be more conscious of I've seen I've seen information on um, this this appliance consumes this this consumes. so we we'll, I think we we'll, we we'll manage our usage better but we also hope, I hope that um, we get better delivery from from this increment we feel I personally feel helpless I don't know what can we do tariff is increased without prior notice without prior knowledge is increased and. We hope there's better delivery. Um, basically, I feel like it's going to take a great toll on people. An average Nigerian citizen is getting like a thirty thousand naira salary, and it would it would basically like ruin a lot of things. I feel like um, for store owners, for people that have like businesses that sell like this drinks and all, it's going to have like an increment in most prices of like little things. Like they're just going to be adding like. An amount yeah so I feel like it's going to like spoil a lot of things it pays us in a way to I hope there's like electricity I know the most times it does increase and then there's no even lights right so I hope it like does something better I think it's going to affect the common masses actually oh so majorly in Nigeria we pay for light that we don't use it's even better for those that use prepaid but the increase in the tariff will surely affect those that use prepaid too so the number of units will reduce. Yes, the number of units will reduce. I think it's going to affect the common masses. So the other option, which is the generator, so the fuel is actually not cheap also. So it's going to affect everybody. But if they can guarantee that there's going to be light, I think it's, it will be better. So we won't be paying for what we are not using. Because in many areas, they're actually paying for what they are not using. Just imagine a situation where you have, like, maybe just twice, just two days, within 30 days. And when they give you the bill, you still see the same amount. That means you are paying for 30 days in which you use the light for just two days. And if you didn't pay, they will just cut the light. So if they can guarantee that there's going to be light, then the increase, we can still consider that. <music> On the Profile TV segment this week, I'll be speaking with the Acting General Secretary of Nui. He brought us up to speed on how workers are faring in the electricity sector while emphasizing on the need for the federal government to call for a state of emergency in the electricity sector. Take a listen. It's good to have you on the program, Sarah, and congratulations on your appointment. It's the first time I'll be having a conversation with you. Thank you. Very quickly, let's move on to the crux of the matter today, which is the increase in electricity tariff. 
I know that um, the Nigerian Union of Electricity employ employees have their experience with government before now. First, how is the union actually receiving this information that we're just getting? Well, thank you. I, I know the union and Nigerians, and you know the kind of poverty situation in the country now. So the increase is eight times. I think the government would have paid more attention in making sure there is accessibility to electricity for Nigerians before it pack of increasing the tariff. And from the tariff increase from 68 Naira to 225 Naira, that means over 300% increase. And it's definitely going to affect the businesses. Now, diesel is in the high cost of 1500 1600 How many people can afford it? The Pantera I'm talking of is the bourgeois, the elites, which controls just 15% of the population. What happened to others? As a businessman, I can just give those people living in Koi, VI, 24 hours electricity, and collect my money. But what are the people living at Sikorodi, Yanapaja, Ibeju? How would they? Are they not Nigerians? The target of Bank A is impoverishing Nigerians the more. The poverty people can never afford to eat. And you are talking of mega minimum wage of 30,000 naira. And you are now inflicting more injuries to Nigerians. The government should be feel so empathic about what is happening in the country. The tariff increase is not a way, it's, it's totally not accepted by the union. We are against it. Okay, now we know that um, the electricity sector was privatized um, at a particular point in time. Um, and it was sold out to some people who are managing it at the moment. How would you rate the performance of the discos and the jenkos? I think it was last year, last two years, even the Senate are calling for a review of the privatization sector. Even the vice president there, Say that Osi Banjo, Professor Osi Banjo, say that they need for the review the whole process. It has not worked. Privatization has not worked in Nigeria. Because since after privatization, they have not added one megawatt to the system. Rather, what I do is to collect the money. And they make more money in estimated bills. And government are giving the directive to go and give me tax mass metering, but none. You cannot even afford to buy any meter now. There's no meter. So what is the regulatory commission doing on how to make sure that Nigerians have meters? Because if I have a meter, I can say, okay, I buy 5,000 naira, I manage it. When you finish, I recharge again. But when you are on a smitten bill, I can come and arrest, okay, this high blue area or this uh, locality, I'll give you 100,000. 100,000 for electricity bill. Well, I'm not sure of eating three times a day. It's like 0.4. Inside Korea to burn, people are angry. And it's clear that it has not won. They should be thinking of how to review, to reform the sector. The banks are after the discourse because they collected money from the banks. Rather, what they're after is how much they're going to make. And they're making so much, they're making Nigerians. We are paying for darkness. I am talking as a Nigerian. So moving away from um, the Jenkos and the Disco's performance, um, what are the practical solutions to this problem so that we do not have to pay for darkness? I think the best solution we can do is uh, going to alternative sources of energy. There's wind, there's sun, especially in the north. Then we can have face other sources of energies. Some countries are going to that. In South Africa now, they have solar, solar farms, wind farms, turbines where they generate another source of energy apart from the normal hydro and thermal generation. So these are the areas we are looking at. What do we do to revamp the center? What do we do to get other sources of energies to add to what we have? If we are talking of moving from fossil fuel to green energy, but now we don't have the fossil fuel. There are a lot of coal, coal in Kogi and Enugu being abandoned. Nothing is happening. 
So these are the things you need to do. What do we do? For the, the, the private sector has failed in the energy sector. And to, the truth is, was it, the privatization was done based on the buyers are the sellers. The same people that sold it and different people that bought it. Man no man, paddy paddy. That was the truth. And that's the pain of industrialization. That's the pain of economic development. Without light, no country develops without electricity. So the question now would be that what is the practical solution to this particular challenge of us as a country or as workers providing electricity that is needed? We know that government um, has its, a bigger role to play. But if the private sector actually came in and there's not much significant improvement what then is the solution? Will you be recommending public-private partnership? Would you be recommending that banks that have taken over these entities um, be act, uh, in, would they, should they be invited by government and government should acquire the properties once again so that um, they probably would get a hold of what is happening in the sector? What are the practical things that needs to be done from the workers' perspective. What they did to me, so-called privatization, was calling a dog a bad name to hang it. Because the same obsolete machines that are still using, the same machine they say that are obsolete, that the same machines that are still using up to now. And it has failed. Not that they have increased around five times tariffs increase in this country after privatization, and it has not worked. So what we are going to ask him for the review of the whole process, come back to the drawing board, what did you do and doing it right? Calling the private sector, calling the public, government, if you have it, the government had that political way, they can do it. So are you saying now that- I... It can be commercialized. It can be commercialized. Some people have licenses. If I have licenses, I can say, okay, in this local government, I let me do it and transmit and distribute and make my money. But some people have less sense up to now, not generated one word. And I see that. So that's the issue then. And what should be done to people, people that fall into that category, what, sh what should be done to them? And I would like to quickly ask um, the model that is being adopted in Abia State, is this something that we can actually adopt as a country? Is it any cheaper? Is this? It is. It may be. That's why that that competition comes in. In geometric, that's where I be getting the light. I have an option to geometric that give me twenty hours light, or go to EEDC that give me five hours or whatever. It that means I give an option, a free to choose. Geometric, yes, give my right and partner with the governor of other states and give the twenty-four hours light. Bravo. Then it's left for the audience now to decide uh, which one is better for me. Is as you go with EEDC that gives me to lower tariff or less hours of light, or I go to a geometric that gives me the four hours light and I pay higher. So, if that's the situation from the workers' perspective, once again, um, is it something that can be modeled across the 36 states of the country? It, it can be a submission because it was a it was a state owned. Which we don't know how they put the, the whatever the workers' conditions, everything they did there. But what we are looking at, yes, we can learn from what they did and improve on it. It can who are suggest that government should take back the sector in the next country. The, the government should take back the sector in the country and sit down and look at it. Commercialize it, yes. If I'm able to generate and distribute, give me that license, but not. Idea of we the buyers are the sellers that don't have not don't have no even experience to run the sector. No foreign direct investment came into the sector. Rather, what they did was to collect money from Nigerian banks. No Malaysia expertise. So that's the big problem of this. No new technology. The same old set of network PS and that's using the same old transformers, the same old the distribution network. None has it changed. Most of them, Nigerians buy transformers for their community and invite the companies to come and connect, which is abnormal. 
So that's the problem. So we have to look at it holistically. How do you move from where we are? We are not heard from because IPA more than it just started now. We need to look at the issues that we to have. So we won't jump into it. But it gives them a leverage of commercial uh, of absorption. I go, EDC is not giving me 10 hours. Geometry is giving me 20 hours. Which one do I go? Based on my salary. Based on affordability. So that's the problem there. So fine, we know that uh, most of this acquisition is now run by banks. What is the welfare of even the workers in the sector? Uh, one would assume that since Nigerians are paying more, maybe you workers are actually the greatest beneficiary. What has it been if, like? If it's that one, we will uh, ask them to increase the tariff so we can get more money. That's the truth. If you are looking at that, uh, uh, workers being, being so insensitive. But look at, we are talking as Nigerians now. The more tariff they collect, the, you know, we go and ask for more salary. But for, I mean, people are working in the legislative sector. What happened to others? So we're looking at this as a Nigerian concept. What do we do? I know President Tinubu can do it. He has the political will to do it. That political will used to declare state of emergency, removal of subsidy in the sector. If you go ahead and declare state of emergency in the legal sector and sit down and let's look at the whole scenario and come out with a blueprint on how to make it work. If you ask us to ask for salary increase, yes, we say, yeah, then they increase it to 500 naira. After all, the workers will benefit. The more tariffs, the more salary we ask. But we are not being selfish. We are being empathy because we are Nigerians. That's the thing then. So if we are first the common man, people are already hungry. The agitation, people don't eat three times a day. And the same 30,000 salary we are seeing any. Transportation is there, school fees, housing is there. Then now, tariff. And most of them there are being estimated bills. And in fact, I'm not making an effort to make sure that the discourse going to that mass meeting the other day, that no regrets in there. And that would have been the first thing to do before I talk of tariff increase. Because if the increase is for the bourgeois, it's for the big guys, the elites there. And because it's cheaper for them, instead of running this of 1,005 a liter, they prefer to pay 200, even 250, even 300 to get to four hours life. It's better for all for them. But how many people can afford it? The papas, the saloons. How can they pay that? So finally, what will be your word for the government? What will be your word for your employers and Nigerians at large? I Nigerians, yes, let me start from Nigerians. I know when we are fighting when we are fighting privatizations, Nigerians will say that ah, we are scared of losing our jobs. But now they are talking now. We are saying that there will not gain the privatization. Privatization does not guarantee efficiency, does not guarantee effectiveness of the sector. And that's what we are in now. So Nigerians are talking last. And everybody wants that knows that now that the privatization has failed in the country. And the government should take the bull by the horn and come down and call this relevant stakeholders to discuss and come up with a group point on how to revamp the economy. But this is the thing of economic development in any country. If you get the reason right, other things will fall in. And in this course, they are enjoying it. Because of tariffs increase. Yes, they are smiling to the banks. And people are crying. That's why sometimes when they go to the school, they attack our members. Because some of them are paying for darkness. They wait for you when you climb the pool. Come down now. Some of them will use juju. Some of them will use matches. It's happening everywhere. So this goes down. This time to okay. Let me not give the people that are us, the bourgeois in the city. Give them the four hours, twenty hours light, and give the other ones four hours light, two hours light, one hour light a day. We are not sure. Of. So I'm not even in the band at all. Some people that don't have light once in a week. Which band will we give them? Band zero. I'll be some band what? So that's the big problem. So you have to come back and look at the whole scenario. All, all decks, all hands must be on deck to make sure the electricity, worker, the electricity sector is revamped in this country. So what do you think government can do to even stop the discrimination? Because I think it's discriminating for you to have brand A, brand B, brand C. What can the government 
do? Is it declare a state of emergency? Is it to have a conference where every stakeholder will be seated to find a lasting solution so that we can have a country that is working efficiently for industry for industries and for citizens as well? Yes, like I said before, I see we treat it the need for us to call all stakeholders to a round table and discuss and look for a way forward and look for possible solutions to this ability power supply in the country. Industries are closing up. A lot of industries are closing up. A lot of organizations are moving out of Nigeria because of power, ability power situation in the country. So all of us will look at it and say, what do we do that we didn't do right? Where do we go from there? How do we make it better? That's the same question we ask. Everybody, the market to member vote, the uh, local government, the student union, all, uh, 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 what do you call it? Borders. The activity, the borders. activity. Yes. Everybody oh. should be involved. All relevant stakeholders should be involved. Both the private sector, the government, the manufacturing association, the market to men, non informal sectors, formal sectors, will be involved for them to discuss this issue. And we'll say we forward. Thank you very much for your time. It was an interesting Thank conversation so I had with you. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching. And remember that labor creates wealth. <laughs>